So part A of this problem, we're going to evaluate the integral of 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th dx as a power series. So let's say I forget about this power series instruction I just gave. I asked you to evaluate this integral. Run through all your techniques. You substitute substitution. I can't do substitution here. Um, trig integrals, integration by part. <coughs> run through. Remember there are some integrals that we still don't know how to compute. All of our techniques, we use them, we try them, and they don't work. So this is an example I think of one where we try all of our techniques, we can't integrate that actually. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write the power series for this this thing in print, this in the integral. I'm going to write the power series for this, and then I'm going to integrate the power series. Okay, so let's start with 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th, and I need to write the power series for that. I see 1 over 1, I'm happy. I see a plus, right? not good, so I'm going to fix that. I'm going to turn it into a minus. Just like on the previous problems. And then we're going to use our formula for this series. Negative x to the seventh. So now what I want to do is I want to integrate 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th. And I'm going to replace it with this series here. So in all the other examples, I wrote out the numbers, which you can do. I want to show you, though, you can also write this. Uh, is it negative x to the 7th or is it negative x to the 7th here? Is it what? Is it negative what? x to the 7th or is it negative x to the 7th? Uh, to the end, yes, thank you. I wrote it. I was looking over earlier, yeah. X to the seventh to the end. There we go. So you can also, if you don't want to write out all the terms individually, you can write them all together. This is negative one to the end, X to the seven N. And then do your reverse power rule where you add one to the power. So you're going to get the summation x to the 7n plus 1 over 7n plus 1 and then you get a plus c. Okay, so it's up to you. You can you can do it the way we've been doing it instead of writing the summation symbol. I can list out all the terms if I wanted. Or you can write this. And just remember that all you're doing when you do this is you're integrating each part here that I've underlined. And so negative 1 to the n is just a constant. It's either 1 or negative 1. And so you just do the reverse power rule on x to the 7 and power. And so this would be your answer. You can't find um, c in this case because I don't know what the, the function is that, represent, that this uh, power series represents. So this would be my answer here. I wanted to compute an integral. And anytime you compute an indefinite integral, you always get a plus c. Okay. And just in case we wanted to know, maybe for the next part we should know this, what is our, this power series converges when negative x to the seventh is less than one? Well, that's just telling me x to the seventh is less than one. 
and x is between negative 1 and 1. Okay. So in part A, what we did is we computed an improper integral. There were no bounds. So let's now look at a, uh, not an improper, an indefinite. Let's look at a, a definite integral. So use what you did in part A to approximate the integral from, oops, from 0 to 1 half. 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th, correct, to within 10 to the negative 7th. So I want to compute this definite integral. So the integral from 0 to 1 half, 1 over 1 plus x to the 7th. I know how to compute, if this was a, an indefinite integral, I would know how to compute this. I have this power series that I had in the last part, part A, this power series here that I've boxed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out some of the terms here in this power series. So if I plug in n equals 0, it looks like you get, so I'll write the integral, 1 minus x to the 7th over 7 plus x to the 15 over, sorry, 14. These are all powers of 7 here. Before I do this, because we don't have it right in front of us, I'm going to write the series for you. We had the series was n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. over 7 to the n plus 1 from 0 to 1 half. So this is what I got when I computed that improper integral. It was c plus something. But we don't have to worry about the c anymore because we have bounds here. So I dropped the c. Okay. <coughs> And let's write out some of these terms because we're going to need to plug in the numbers 1 half and 0 into here. And it's going to be hard to plug that in, see what you get until we list out these terms. So if I plug in n equals 0, you're going to get 1 minus x to the 7th over 7 plus x to the 14th over 14 minus x to the 21st. Wait, why do I have, no, I cannot do this right now. I'm sorry. These are all 7n plus 1. So we're getting x minus x to the 8th over 8 plus x to the 15 over 15 minus x to the 22 over 22. There we go. plus x, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1, 29, over 29, and so forth. Um, There's not a 1, because what I've already done is I've already integrated. That's why I was getting a little tripped up. Because we integrated, and this is what we got in the last one, when we integrated, well, plus a c. But I'm dropping that plus C because I have a definite integral. And we've already integrated. So these are the terms that we got at the end of the last problem. We had, after we had integrated, we had x minus x to the 8 over 8.
We don't need to integrate again because we already did that in the last problem. We already know how to integrate this. We did it in the last problem. So now I want to plug in the two bounds that I have, which are 0 and 1 half. So what happens when I plug in 0 for x? Everything goes away. They're all zeros, right? So I don't have to worry about this bottom number. Because when I plug in the bottom number, I just get 0. So all I need to do is plug in the top number. So let's plug in the top number. We get 1 half minus 1 over 2 to the 8th times 8 plus 1 over 2 to the 15 times 15. minus 1 over 2 to the 22nd times 22, plus 1 over 2 to the 29th times 29, uh, and so forth. Why didn't you move your uh, power to the bottom? So I'm plugging in 1 half. Mm -hmm. So let me show you what I'm doing when I do that. Like oh, on this, yeah, yeah, I'm taking, uh, let me explain that. I'm doing 1 half to the 8th. Well, that's 1 to the 8th over 2 to the 8th, which is 1 over 2 to the 8th. Right. So the numerators are all going to be 1, and the denominator, so I move everything to the denominator. That's what happens. Okay. And then this is minus dot, dot, dot. And my goal was I want to approximate, this is some sum, here in parentheses or in brackets. What kind of series is this? The signs changing. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Flip flopping. What kind of series do you have when it's flip flopping? It's a tip top series. It's a <laughs> alternating <laughs> series. Uh, so remember, we talked about error with alternating series. Your error comes from when you. When you look at partial sums, it comes from the turn, the next term you didn't add on. Okay? So I want to be within, the problem said 10 to the negative second. So what I need to do is I need to start computing these numbers, these fractions here, and see what I get. I want to get the first time I get a number small enough, 10 to the negative se seven. That's what I'm looking for. So you're going to take the numbers that are in this list here, so let's start. 1 half is 0 0.5. Take the next number. So it would be 1 over 2 to the 8th times 8. If you put that in a calculator, it'll give you 4.88 times 10 to the negative 4th. And you're going to keep going down in the list. So compute 1 over... 2 to the 15th times 15, 2.0345 times 10 to the negative 6. That's still not small enough. Um, and you keep going, and you're going to stop at this number here. So if you look at 1 over 29 times 2 to the 29th, that's the first time you're going to get a number small enough. 10 to the negative 11th is going to be the power. And so I want to cut that part off because that's going to be my error. So I'm going to add up all of the terms before the one that had a power of 29. So I'm going to add up, it looks like, these first four terms. Okay, so that's what you're going to add up here to approximate. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that that's going to be small enough. You got 10, okay, then we want to stop, yeah, okay. You got 1 over 2 times 22, what was that? times 10 to the negative 8. So then that's going to be our error, and it'll be within the right 
yeah so we'll want to cut it off before then so integrate from 0 to 1 half 1 over 1 plus x to the seventh it's going to approximately be and you add up 1 half minus 1 over 8 times 2 to the eighth plus 1 over 15 times 2 to the 15th and I don't have that calculated so I can't tell you what it is but you would add that up in a calculator and that would be your approximate value for your definite integral and it'll be pretty accurate I mean 10 to the negative seventh that's a point zero 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 lots of zeros there so that's a pretty accurate estimate for this uh, definite integral okay so we can use so to kind of sum up these uh, this last problem a and b what we did is we can use power series to integrate functions that we couldn't before and we can use them to give us estimates on our um, definite integrals and to do that, we need to use our error bound information from alternating series.